What if Croatia decided to restore its monarchy? Who would be the rightful king? In today's video, we'll be exploring the potential candidates for the throne. Let's get started. A recent survey conducted in Croatia revealed that 41% of respondents supported the idea of restoring the Croatian monarchy. Historically, Croatia has had strong ties with monarchies, and the survey results suggest that a large number of traditionalist Catholics in the country may be inclined to favor the monarchy over a republic. So, who would be the king if Croatia chose to bring back the crown? To understand the possible contenders to the throne, let's briefly look at the history of Kingdom of Croatia. Part of the lands of the Hungarian crown and later the Habsburg monarchy, Croatia has been subject to imperial Austrian rule for a significant period. After the Austro-Hungarian Compromise of 1867 and Croatian-Hungarian Settlement of 1868, the Kingdom of Croatia-Slavonia was formed, while the Kingdom of Dalmatia remained a crown land in the Austrian part of the empire. In 1918, the state of Slovenes, Croats and Serbs declared independence, setting the stage for the various pretenders to the Croatian throne today. So the first contender is the Karadjordjevic dynasty, a Serbian and Yugoslav royal family. After the breakup of Austro-Hungarian Empire, the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes, which was later remained into Kingdom of Yugoslavia, was formed. However, no member of Karadjordjevic family ever claimed to be King of Croatia, and the Kingdom of Croatia didn't exist within the borders of Yugoslavia, as it did within the Kingdom of Hungary and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Due to historical disputes between Croats and Serbs, it is very unlikely that the Karadjordjevic dynasty would gain support of the Croatian people. So, let's move over to the next contender, the House of Savoy. During the World War II, Croatia was ruled by the Nazi puppet state, known as the Independent State of Croatia, and the H. While it was nominally a monarchy, there was no actual king during this period. Prince Aimon, 4th Duke of Alcosta, a member of Italy's reigning House of Savoy, was designated to be king of NDH, taking the name Tomislav II. However, he never ruled and later abdicated in protest of the Italian annexation of the Dalmatia region. Given the association with the controversial NDH and the Aimon's reluctance to actually take the throne, the House of Savoy is an unlikely candidate for the Croatian crown. And finally, we come to Habsburgs, descendants of the last Emperor of Austro-Hungary and King of Hungary, Charles. With centuries of history ruling over Croatian lands and peoples, the dynasty of Habsburgs would be the ideal candidates. The current pretender to the throne is Karl von Habsburg, head of the House of Habsburg Lorraine, and the grandson of the last Austro-Hungarian Emperor, Charles I. An Austrian politician, Karl served as a member of European Parliament for the conservative Austrian People's Party between 1996 and 1999. Karl is head of the Habsburg family and someday his eldest son Ferdinand will succeed him. So, if Croatia were to restore its monarchy today, the most likely candidate for the throne would be Karl von Habsburg. But what do you think? Would the Habsburg king be the best choice for Croatia or do you have any thoughts on this matter? Let me know down in comments. Thank you for joining me on this fascinating exploration of Croatian history and search for potential monarch. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more monarchist content like this. And as always, let me know if there is any other topic you'd like me to cover in the future. And in the meantime, check out one of these videos.